In America, we have a statement. When someone is uh, claiming something, we say, put your money where your mouth is. In other words, if you really believe that, what are you willing to do for it? How much money will you spend for it? Put your money where your mouth is. And essentially, Allah Ta'ala is reminding us of the same message. So you claim faith and you claim righteousness, but what are you willing to spend? And many understandings of that. One, some say, and they spend their wealth out of their love for Him, out of their love for Allah. Because they love Allah, and Allah Ta'ala loves for us to spend. And so they spend, and they spend their wealth because they love to spend. So everyone has a different path to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each person is different. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنُّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who strive uh, for our sake, we guide them in our paths. في سبولنا Our paths, there are many paths leading to Allah and they're as unique as the number of individuals who choose to undertake the journey. Some people their path is fasting. Some people their path is prayer. Some people their path is, 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 ch is charity, spending. Every fundraiser they're there and they're writing a check and they've internalized the meaning of the Prophet saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam مَا نَقَصَتْ صَدَقَةٌ مِنْ مَال or sadaqa will never, spending will never decrease your wealth. Spending will never decrease your wealth. They've internalized that because they've seen how every time they write a check, somehow from somewhere, Allah Ta'ala replenishes them. Allah Ta'ala puts more barakah in the money that remains in their hand. And they've seen that and they've witnessed it. They've internalized it so they continue to spend. And they love spending. That's one meaning. And they spend their wealth in spite of their love for it. And most scholars say this is the most likely meaning. For Allah Ta'ala mentions that we've been made to love wealth. Uh, he mentions the Quran, so it's been made alluring to people the love of their lust and their longing for the opposite gender, specifically mentioned women and children, literally sons, but children in general, and heaped up hordes of gold and silver and branded steeds, cattle, branded steeds, cultivated fields. All of this is a wherewithal of the life of this world and with Allah is the best is the is the best return so we should we can love those things Allah says it's been made pleasing to us but we should love Allah more we should love Allah more than the wealth we should love the wealth especially if we get it and we get it in abundance and then we use it feasibility we use it to support the Islamic society of Britain we use it to support our local masjid we use it to help build a madrasa for the children of our community. We use it to help the poor and suffering Muslims all over the world. We should pray Allah gives us billions of pounds or dollars, whatever the case might be. And we can spend those fees of left. So this is loving wealth, there's nothing wrong with that. But we should love Allah Ta'ala more. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ so when there's a conflict between the love of the wealth that causes us to riba, that causes us to, to monopolizing and hoarding, that causes us to insider trading, that causes us to invest in corrupt businesses involving alcohol or involving the usurpation of people's money, that causes us to spend old ladies' pension funds, and all of these corrupt economic crisis are practices that have contributed to the crisis we find ourselves in globally, in financial terms. We say, no, we love Allah more. And because I love Allah more, even though I love the wealth, I'm not going to engage in riba to get more of it. Even though I love the wealth, 
زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين وقناطير مقنطرة even though I love the wealth I'm not going to steal people's pensions fund and gamble with it in a stock market to get more money I'm not going to exploit people, abuse people, rip off people, and I'm not going to deny the right of the poor out of my love for the money. And their right, wealth, there's a well-defined right for the poor and those forced to ask. I'm not going to refuse to pay my zakat. So, in spite of their wealth, and Allah Ta'ala tells us more specific terms that this is the most likely meaning لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ You will never attain righteousness until you spend from what you love. And whatever you spend, Allah knows it well. So Allah Ta'ala says they spend their wealth and we can say in spite of their love for it. And for whom? ذَوُ الْكُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَ وَالْمَسَكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَالسَّائِلِينَ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ they spend it for the relative who's in need. That will kurba, will yatama, and for the orphan, both the orphan who might be a relative and the orphan who is unrelated. I see a tent for Islamic relief. I know they have an orphan sponsorship project. Go sponsorship an orphan for two, or, or two, for just a few pounds a month. It won't hurt you in any way. It might help you. You give a few pounds to sponsor an orphan, and you have to give up a couple of fish and chip dinners or a few samosas every month. It's good for your waistline, inshallah. Omar radiallahu anhu, he saw a man walking and the man had a huge stomach. And if you have a huge stomach, we're not talking about you because people have big stomachs for different reasons. But this man had a big stomach because he ate too much. If you have one out there, it's because you have a slow metabolism. And <laughs> so you only eat, eat a little bit but you just can't burn it off but this man ate too much and Omar said to him that would look better if it were on someone else in other words if all of that excess was distributed amongst the poor and needy people it would be better for everyone for you and for them so they spend for the, for the orphan, related and on with the, the poor people, and masakin, webna sabil, and they poor spend for the wayfarer. Islam is the only religion that's mandated spending for the wayfarer. Here is voluntarily, but in the verse of zakat, in the masadaqad al fuqara al masakin wal abinin alayha wal mu alafati qulubuhum, is mentioned the wayfarer. Why? One of the wisdoms that the scholars say, when we spend for the wayfarer, we spend and the wayfarer moves on. So there's no opportunity for showing off. There's no opportunity for react. There's no opportunity to go to that person. Yeah, remember how generous I am and just because I'm just like that. I mean, don't mention it. <laughs> I'm just, you know, someone has to be generous. Why not me? <laughs> no, the wayfarer is gone. There's no showing off. There's no react. And another reason that they mention the wayfarer is a metaphor for us as we journey through this world. The Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned kun fit dunya ka gharib abir sabir. Be in the world as if you are a stranger or a wayfarer just passing through. And as we move on our journey through the wor this world, people spend freely on us. Our parents spend freely on us, they don't have to. How many irresponsible fam uh, parents, instead of buying food and saving for their child's education, they're in a pub somewhere, or they're in a crack house somewhere, or they're buying clothes for themselves so they can go out and party and impress people. Those could be our parents, but Allah put mercy in their hearts and they spend their wealth for us. It doesn't have to be the case. How many people have spent for our education? How many people have contributed to our well-being? Some of us through unfortunate circumstances. We might need public assistance for a period of time in our life. How many well many people have contributed their money and their taxes to make that possible? And how many people are upset by the selfishness that's permeating our society? 
where everyone wants to do away with programs to assist the poor and the needy and the downtrodden and the dispossessed and the wealth just the wealthy just hoard the the wealth the corporations hoard the wealth and let everyone else just suffer to their fate they said they can pick themselves up by their bootstraps like we did that would be good if we didn't if, if the developed countries didn't steal their boots maybe they could pick themselves up by their bootstraps <laughs>